Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to continue on talking about the path of the sun on the celestial sphere, or basically through the sky. When we last left off, we were talking about the seasons. And remember, the seasons are caused by the tilt of Earth's axis, 23 and a half degrees, and also its revolution around the sun. The sun itself and the stars that also we see at night appear on what's called the celestial sphere very similar to what we have here in a diagram. Notice we have the observer in the middle, right here. We can connect our north and south, east and west, and that the observer appears right on the center of them. This right here, this portion, is our celestial sphere. That's the backdrop at which the sun appears on. Notice that in this diagram, the sun is gonna rise in the east some arrows on there it gets to noon where it's at its highest point and then it's going to set towards the west because it's rising and setting directly in the east and west this is going to be one of the equinoxes we actually not really sure from the diagram here it doesn't give us enough information but it knows as equinox so the noon sun is when the sun has reached its highest point in the sky for that day so here right up right at the celestial sphere it's the highest point that's noon in new york state roughly 42 degrees north latitude and it can vary a degree or a couple of degrees the sun will never be directly overhead remember the sun's rays when we draw this here's our earth with the equator and we have its tilt of 23 and a half degrees here we're going to put our sun the sun's rays come in and they hit at 23 and a half degrees in the summer. Sun's rays are perpendicular to Earth at 23.5 degrees. So that's as that's as that's as high as it gets up. That's the most northern uh, sorry, that's where it's gonna be highest in the noon sky as we travel away from this location more north the altitude of the sun will decrease the highest angle that we'll ever see the noon sun in new york state is 23 and a half degrees in class we're going to go over exactly how to get this number and only latitudes between this is the probably is the more important part right here only latitudes between 23 and a half degrees north and south can ever have the noon sun directly overhead And remember where the sun's rays hit. This diagram right here is nice. Sun's rays coming here. This is 23.5 degrees. We're roughly right here along this line. So we'll notice we're this distance away from it. That number of degrees is how much less in the sky that the sun will be directly overhead. Okay, so here's a couple of questions. We'll run through these uh, together because they're a little bit, they can be a little bit more difficult. So we want to know where does the sun rise and set on the summer solstice? We can pick from these different lines right here. Now this is a red one. I'll draw the path here. It comes up and it's going to come around. That's our red path. Let's see if we get green here. Keep this one. It's our celestial sphere. And then blue one. So those are the three choices that we have. Now remember the sun is in the northern hemisphere at this point in the year. It's at 23 and a half degrees north. That's where the sun's rays are directly hitting. Therefore, the sun's rays, or the sun is gonna rise north of east and set north of west right here so this one summer june 21st the red line will be our summer solstice path on the equinoxes remember the sun's rays the sun's going to rise and set directly on the east this 
will be our answer for that. So we have to look at where the sun is rising and setting. If it's directly on the east and west, we know it's one of the equinoxes. On the winter solstice, remember the sun is now in the southern hemisphere. Its direct rays are going to be more concentrated in the southern hemisphere, 23 and a half degrees south. Therefore, the sun is going to rise south of east. So if there's a east, notice it's a little bit more towards the south. So it rises, gets to noon, sets south of west. This blue path right here is our winter solstice. This diagram is a little bit difficult to copy down. We're going to work on these in class a little bit more. Um, but if you can get these, they're definitely I would definitely get them. Okay, remember the time that the sun is in the sky equates to the season that it is. So if we look at this red path, we can see that it's a pretty big path compared to maybe this blue one. The bigger the path, path equals more daylight hours the more daylight hours we have means that most likely we're going into a longer uh, a summer season so this red one is our summer season also it's june 21st kind of a little bit of giveaway there at noon towards which direction would an observer look sorry at noon towards which direction would an observer look to find the sun so we want at noon. Remember, noon is right up here. It's where these paths are at their highest points. So it doesn't matter if we're at this one, here, or here. If you're an observer standing right here, do you look to the north or do you look to the south? Well, these are our noon positions, so you have to look towards the south. To see our noon sun remember in the northern hemisphere where we are long island 42 degrees north latitude we need to look to the south to see the noon sun at 12 noon remember our noon positions it's noon right here for all it's the average of all three of those which direction will you look to find your shadow remember the sun comes down hits the little alligator friend creates a shadow There's my shadow. So he would actually have to look in this direction, which is north to find his shadow. Speaking of shadows, we'll take a look at this. Shadows, basically the, your length of shadow that you have is gonna depend on the altitude of the sun. When the sun has an extremely high altitude, like directly overhead at your zenith, it produces a shadow that's directly underneath you. So it'll be a very small, short shadow. On the other hand, when the altitude of the sun is low, so if I draw a celestial, actually I could just draw a person. Here's the ground. If my sun is over here, it's gonna create a shadow that's really big. Same diagram. If the sun is right here, notice that the sun's rays come down. And now that my shadow is shorter. So increase altitude of the sun means a decrease in shadow length. Two little diagrams that we get down by. And here it is, same thing. So if you want to get these, these work too. But they show that the angle, the altitude of the sun as it changes, is going to give you a larger or shorter shadow. Okay, so in which picture is the sun very low in the sky? So we have to look at the length of our shadow. So we have this one right here versus this one. A little bit different photographs, but we can see that this one is really stressed out. So this is low in the sky. 
And that's about it for shadows. We'll keep zodiacs for another time. So I hope you enjoyed that screencast. Have a good day.